What's up, my fellow creepers and things that go bump in the night? Welcome back to yet another episode of Creature of the Night. I am your host, Toxin, your friendly neighborhood center. You should know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell to let you know every time I upload so you can keep up to date with me, guys. You should get on this shit. Um, feeling good. Uh, so this is... This is a little... This is an unknown uh, little werewolf movie, but I... It's a B movie, guys, but I actually... I genuinely enjoyed it. It came out back in 2014, and I'm speaking, of course, of Late Phases. Oh, guys, yeah, so, again, it's a, it's a B-movie. It's pretty unknown to a lot of people. Unless, you know, again, like, you're a hardcore, like, werewolf fan, horror fan, you just like to dive into these, like, late-night scrolling situations on Netflix, because Netflix has a lot of unknown horror movies with a lot of unknown actors most of the time. Uh, I did like uh, that it had the Tooth Fairy from uh, Red Dragon, I forget his name, but, like, uh, Noonan or something like that. Uh, I forget his damn name, but he, he played Kane also in uh, Robocop 2, I believe. Um, it was cool that he, you know, he's a preacher in this. So it has like little people uh, throughout it. Uh, essentially, we see this uh, this veteran who is now blind. He has a dog named Shadow, and his son is kind of like forcing him to go into a retirement home. You know, a, a not a, not necessarily an assistant living uh, situation, but it, it is like a an old uh, a retirement home community. Like you know, you get your own. I guess it's a duplex houses. You know, side by side. Uh, he's again forcing him to go in there again he's blind you know you're kind of moving on with your life too it's not right i don't believe that you should do that to people but i do understand that you know the elders you know your life is going on and certain situations happen to where you really can't take care of your parents or your grandparents or anything like that so i'm understanding but it's still kind of a fucked up situation and this is kind of a good example of it other than you know health and you how often do you really go to a nursing home to visit your grandparents or your parents uh, I didn't mean to get that dark with this or to you know stabbing people in the heart with the situation but you know it is what it is I am your neighborhood center I could do what the hell I want anyways he's going into this retirement home he's already giving attitude to everybody he just doesn't he just he doesn't want to be here he doesn't he doesn't give a shit for his uh, son he's always been distant with his son you know, and now that the mom's gone, there really is no connection between him and his son. It's like, okay, whatever. And he kind of just down talks to him the whole time. Well, you know, after, even, like, it doesn't even wait, really. Like, it's like the first night in his uh, in this retirement home that something happens. The woman next to him is killed, and he's hearing the whole thing through the walls. And we already see it. They already expose it. it it's a werewolf. A werewolf tears her apart. But it actually, there's already... Like certain situations were upon their arrival that there are animal attacks throughout uh, the home that there is a lot of unexplained deaths and so it's already like leading up to like hey, what the hell could it be you know um the wolf, i'm just being honest the wolf on the cover of the film is way different than the wolf that is actually in the film um i do feel sad when because uh, shadow does his job and protects his owner but shadow ends up losing his life because of it and now it's Ambrose takes it upon himself, you know, after he starts hearing more and more details about people who are dying and the way that they're dying, uh, he takes it upon himself to kind of like investigate. Let's investigate. He's uh, getting familiar with the home, how, um, so, uh, how, since he is blind, he is like measuring steps and how far certain things are and figuring out who's around them, who my, it may likely be. And it turns out to be the damn groundskeeper of the home. He's a uh, he's a little old, like a little bit younger than Ambrose. I want to say Ambrose is probably like that's the main guy. That he is um, like maybe in his late sixties. I want to say he's in his sixties, early sixties, late sixties. And then this guy's probably like in his early, his late no, probably like his early fifties. I want to say so he's a little bit he's a little bit younger. You can tell definitely in his face. But he's like, uh, I kind of got the, the vibe of a silver bullet situation because this werewolf is like really heavy on religion. He turned to God thinking that this was a punishment. You know, uh, he actually ended up 
hunting down the original werewolf that scratched him and ki he ended up killing him but he him being scratched himself just carried it on so he thought maybe it was a punishment or something going on he tried to feed off his lust for blood and flesh with animals which is why a lot of the local animals were be were disappearing but you know again you can only like that can only satisfy you so much to eventually the the animal comes over uh, takes over and ends up <laughs> you know he ends up going after people uh after you know basically setting up his trap he's doing a home alone situation where he's getting familiar with his new home he's setting up booby traps because he knows that he he knows that the werewolf knows that who he is now because he kind of puts two and two together uh just because of the the smell that the wor the wolf kind of tracks on him so it's not just the animal smell but he notices that it has a hint of a cigarette smell so he goes off thinking that it's the preacher the two uh, you know uh noonan that he thinks is Noonan at first, but then after hearing the groundskeeper coughing that he was a former smoker, and he kind of indulges every now and then, he's like, okay, now this is this is actually who it is. Like, this is uh, who is uh, attacking. So he sets up for war, essentially, but Ambrose being blind, not he doesn't notice that the wolf, that this the groundskeeper is actually watching him get silver bullets and gets silver bullets and setting up all these different things so he goes ahead and builds up his army starts infecting the people of the home biting them turning them into werewolves so when the full moon comes out they all invade so this it's it's insane it's like it's so crazy but it's not unbelievable if that makes sense because with people who lose their sight all their other senses heighten to almost superhero levels and i've read i read it in books and i've actually talked to people and friends who are actually who have lost their sight and they're like yeah dude you know again like me exaggerating it's not superhero level but it, it does enhance to where it is almost like an echolocation or they are my eyes my ears are my eyes so I, I can hear and I'll tap certain he'll tap certain things and it sends an echo through the house so that's how they know where they're at in certain situations so this one is no different it's just crazy that when he starts sniping you know he's just he actually puts on his hearing aid to hear that much better so taking 10 times stronger to making it like 50 times stronger he's actually shooting at these werewolves taking them off one by one until he gets to the main the main dude who he actually set up a grave he was building a grave for uh, shadow and he actually gets an oversized tombstone he traps the wolf in the grave and drops the tombstone on him and he's out of bullets he's out of several bullets he's already killed everybody else and he all he has is this uh his shovel from his uh his military days that he goes hand to hand with the wolf is again pretty crazy to see you know i was like oh my god it's kind of unbelievable but it it was just so entertaining to watch guys i i recommend it i do believe this is on netflix the last time i seen it it just popped up one night again it was like late didn't have to go to work the next day so i'm like fuck it let's watch it it's a old you know it's a good it's an oldie but it's a goodie uh, I give it two thumbs up, 10 out of 10, just because this is a biased film for me because I'm a werewolf fan, a huge werewolf fan, so I can do no wrong. Again, I, I can understand the un you know how it is unbelievable, how it does jump the shark, jump the board in certain situations, especially with him not having sight and him going to war with these werewolves. It was just pretty insane. I just love the whole concept behind it, and I love... And again, I love the vibes that it gave me, that it, it gave me the, my all-time favorite horror film, Silver Bullet vibes, you know. So I, I had to like it, you know. It, it was just it was just amazing. I could actually sit there and watch it. Is, is it up there with Silver Bullet for me? Absolutely not. But it is a, definitely a film that I could put on and watch and enjoy every single time I watch it. So guys, go check it out. Let me know what you thought about the film. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me know what you thought about the film. Let me know what you thought about the video down in the comments below, guys. Please go follow all our Instagrams. Go check out my brother's Instagram and their uh, YouTube page as well. They're they're going back to schools and it's kind of like on hiatus right now with their page. But we are going to get it up and going. As you saw on Prey, if you did watch my Prey, thank you by the way for shooting that up through the roof. Um, that if you uh, if you checked it out he is going to get his page up and running i know he's been talking about it for years but we are getting we it's something is in the works guys so just bear with us we're, we're getting it together and like i always say if you're not sinning you're not having fun beware the moon guys